I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start by just saying um, we know that's a quality team. Um, but I think one of the best parts of the start of the game today is we have a mental performance guy, Dr. Mondo. And he did a great job of bringing perspective to the girls of saying, I think it was 96 days ago, we played this team and we are a different team. We are a different team today than we were back then. So just proud of just how we're playing ball, you know, um, every part of the game. We're pitching, we're hitting, we're defending. Um, and, and, you know, the goal is to obviously be your best at this point, but I, I couldn't be more proud. It was spread out throughout the team. There were just great plays, big time hits. But I think all of it starts with Maya Brady sending the message with her first at bat that we're here to play. And uh, I think it started, <laughs> everybody wanted to hit, which I think really allows for us as coaches to be able to say, oh, it's going to be a really fun that we're on attack mode. Um, so I'll just say this, um, game one, it's always the biggest one. We've got to be able to appreciate tonight get some rest, and come back, because I guarantee you there'll be a dog fight tomorrow. Coach, when you have oh, I'm sorry. Here, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Coach, when you have victories like this, um, is this something that you're expecting? Or, like, or let me rephrase it, what, what do you say to the team after a victory like this? That we played our game, you know, and, and that's ultimately the plan, is if you have the ability to do what we did tonight on all, every part of the game, that, that is the plan. But this, that's the expectation of the team. <laughs> Um, what I love is the standard of UCLA softball is to be able to show up and play when it matters most. And um, I love that these girls are doing that. So what I say is they played their game. And I, I always say the team that settles in to play their game first gives themselves the best chance to win. And you saw UCLA softball tonight. Okay. Well, my coach, I was just talking about your mental performance coach. I know that's been a big part of the season. Just how do you think that helped you get in, get in the zone for today? Yeah, I think like one of my favorite things that he like kind of reminds us of basically every time we talk to him, is that it's already written. And I think for us, it just honestly lifts a weight off of us that, you know what, like, yes, we obviously have a say in our performance, but at the end of the day, there's an outcome that's already written that, you know what, no matter if we, you know, strike out or, you know, you go four for four, like that was the outcome that was supposed to happen. So I think for us, it just allows us to kind of let go and play free. And um, I think he just continues to fire us up for games and, um, He's just really a rock for all of us. I think we all really look to him a lot. Um, so, yeah. Tara? Uh, Caitlin, for you, in the second inning, Jalen Lauchin lays out in left field. When your teammates make a catch like that, how does that make you feel in the circle? Um, it's definitely, like, a relief, but... With our outfield, I already know like any ball that's in the air, they're gonna catch it regardless. Like no matter where it's at night, right when she laid out, I knew she was gonna have it. But yeah, it takes like a big like relief off of me. And what was working so well for you in the circle tonight? Um, definitely my drop ball was working a lot, especially like towards the lefties. But my changeup coming in at the end of the day, I think was a really like big aspect. But yeah. Sam? Uh, for Maya, you scored the first three runs of the game, and two of those were home runs. What does it mean for you to be able to come through? Um, I mean, I think for me, it means everything to me. I mean, I think that's why I do what I do, and um, that's a constant motivator for me, especially, you know, with KT on the mound. Obviously, she's never been here before. Um, so I think against a big swinging team like that, you know, they're a great offense, super aggressive, and they've proved that all year. But I think for me, it's just literally trying to put my team in the best position to, you know, get us a dub at the end of the day or give us at least a little room against a swinging team like that. But I think that everything I do is, you know, for my teammates. So for me and working with Mondo, that has given me a lot of peace of mind to just go out there and um, try and be the best version of me. Haley? Uh, hi, Haley Swinger. So I'm Mary. I wanted to ask about your defensive play. You're at shortstop, but you're also, like, everywhere on the field. Can you see your role as on defense and, and Coach Ike and you and yeah. Yeah. Um, she's defensively too? She asked you first. <laughs> <laughs> um, again, I think it's just me trying to, you know, be free and be the best version of myself and just have fun. And when I'm loose and, you know, laughing and able to enjoy myself on the field, I think crazy things can happen. And it's stuff that we practice. I think Coach Lisa does a great job of allowing, you know, the infielders to be super creative throughout, you know, practices and stuff. And so I think it's honestly just a culmination of, you know, all the hard work that she pours into us, but also just having a lot of fun and trying to enjoy every one of these last moments with my team. And then, I'll, you know, I want to speak to that because 
one of the biggest things that I respect about just we're fortunate. We get to go out and recruit just phenomenal athletes. Maya was an infielder uh, before she came here. She went to the outfield um, for what was best for the team in her first couple years, was an All-American in the outfield, and took on the leadership role um, in the last two years. Last year, it was almost um, a little unexpected. She was ready to do whatever she could for the team, but I wanted her at shortstop this year. I wanted her with the young pitching staff to be to be on the field so that she could communicate with them and keep the team together, and she has done a phenomenal job. She's an, an amazing athlete, which, which we all know, but she's a, a phenomenal leader. She reads confidence, um, and when she's loose, you see some just pretty amazing plays. I would like to shout out that you know, every once in a while, she'll like kind of watch some Dansby Swanson plays, just be able to <laughs> play Dansby. Um, but she's smooth like that. She's smooth like that, and she, it, it never surprises me, um, the plays that she makes. I mean, the, you see the ball in the hole that she came in, she turned, first of all, I told her that Kuma was fast, there was no play, but still, did that not look sweet? Do you know, I mean, just the way she plays, I sit there and I'm not, I'm, I'm continuing to be amazed at just some of the things that she's capable of doing, but I saw her in seventh grade just make some pretty special plays. She's a great athlete. Two people in Maybe it didn't count my eyes, but it still looked cool. Uh, <laughs> Style points. I tried. But Coach Imaya was just talking about kind of like the likeness that this team feels, especially yeah. after uh, the way last season ended. Just mm -hmm. how important was it to get that, that pressure off of you guys and just go play? You know, a big part of why I brought in uh, the mental performance coaches was for that. And I need to tell you, we let that go in, in fall. And we, this team in 24 wasn't carrying the burden of last year. This team in 24 in the beginning was carrying the burden of figuring out who we were. We weren't healthy. I, last time we played them, KT was in a knee brace. She was on a pitch count. She was nowhere near the same pitcher, and we just kind of went through a rough start. But it, it, we let, you know, he helped us move on in fall. So I intentionally brought him in for that reason. Um, with that being said, we've been ramping up to be able to really figure out how, just understanding who we are, you know. And th there was a quote that I had, you know, she remembered who she was, and then everything changed. We are, we have the ability to do it all, but we weren't getting the outcome early in the season. So the belief of it is allow for them to play freely. Like they know that they can. They know that, as Maya said, that it's out of our control. There's things, we, you know, Tessa hit some hard balls, they hit some hard balls tonight and they were out. You know, it's like we understand our sport. So that has freed up, you know, the pressure of what we need to do or for UCLA. I mean, they're just playing ball, which I love. And we're at our best as a program when you get great talent that is willing to do anything for the program. They have each other's backs. If they play freely, man, we see some serious brewing magic and tonight was a night Big night, game one, super regionals against a quality opponent. Um, I'm so proud of just how they played, and it was fun to watch. It definitely was. Then I'm asking you time for two more questions after that. Uh, coach, uh, offense firing on a cylinder, yep. uh, Jordan's half continuing. Yeah, huge. Can you speak to their performance and what you said to them? But, you know, I think a big part of it is, um, first of all, I, I, I credit our coaches. You know, we, we brought in even some some great, just Lisa's transition into hitting. So we brought in some consultants that Lisa's been working with as well. Um, but they're prepared. So, you know, we know what Maya Brady can do, and she continues to do it. And it's so impressive to watch, you know, Maya and Shar do those things. But... With UCLA softball in the history, as long as I've been here, we're at our best when the bottom half is taking care of it. You know, and Jordan, it was funny, I had a, a conversation with her before that at bat because, you know, you can see that they can pitch around certain players. You know, Megan's not, Megan Grant, you know, when she does get a good strike, I look forward to that. But they're kind of pitching around, and she, Jordan has been a great hitter in that situation, just being able to know they're pitching around Megan, and then she comes. And it's, the Savvy Pola is, I, I actually talked to her on April 1st. And I was like, you know, beginning part of season, because she's one of the most consistent hitters we've had in this program in her first two years. And she kind of flipped it and she went to work. So it's no surprise to us, but it's also a big part of the strength when the bottom half gets it done. That allows for, you know, you feel the momentum building of coming back up to the top. So, um, yes, Jordan, uh, Savvy, Tessa, you know, Nelly even has the quality walks. Don't go down as a hit, but that walk is huge to be able to, to load the bases. Those things create pressure and allows the lineups to turn over. So... Yes, credit to them, definitely. I'm going to Paige Halstead over here. Paige Halstead? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Hi, Paige. Hi, I just made my day. <laughs> <laughs> um, my question is for Caitlin. Obviously, you dominated today in the circle. As a freshman, sometimes it's tough to be on a stage like this. What keeps you so calm? Um, definitely Coach I saying take Debbie's. I've actually taken that into, like, consideration. Like, before every pitch, I just take a Debbie, and it just makes me, like, reset everything I feel like it just makes me like pitch loose because when I pitch tight it's just not good so honestly I think taking Debbie's is like my biggest like thing that I what's do. a Debbie a deep breath yeah a deep exaggerated <laughs> breath yes yeah, so just in case you didn't know 
Um, but yes, I'm not the only one that does it. Char, Char will call time out every once in a while. And I love watching it. Char will go out, and there's times where she'll say, take a deep breath, and KT will, I can see her going, I'm fine. Like, get, get back, the pitcher 101. And then Char will go in again and say, no, take a deep breath. And then <laughs> I'll see her take. So that combination, I think Char also, and Maya in her back pocket, when you have that kind of experience that is right there and that has your back, they've done a great job of building confidence and being able to slow down um, KT in her first round of postseason, big time. We're going to have Steve here. Yeah, Coach, how you doing? Good. Um, during the Arizona um, series, you told me um, the best is yet to come. Yep. Okay, now, what's your 20, <laughs> 20, 20, 24 out of 26 last you won, and you're 12 in a row. When did you see this team turn everything around? Um, ah, I don't know if there's an exact date. I, I really don't know, but we've hit – you know, there's been, I've told them, and I can, mm -hmm. I have it in a book, but it's literally, there's, I told them there's going to be critical moments during the season. You know, we dropped a game at Palm Springs to Baylor, and we played Tennessee the next day. I'm like, this is a critical moment on how you show up. You know, we lost to Arizona on a Saturday, and then we came the next day on senior day, pack, packed house, wasn't the plan to go down 7-0, but it was a critical moment. Um, you know, there's, there's, there's so many. We were down again in the Pac-12 tournament. You know, there were just critical moments. So I can't put it on any one thing. But the most important thing is I say so many things have happened. It's not the drama of what happened, but it's what you do next. And this team does a great job of getting to the next pitch with a strong belief that they can wipe it and they can go. And I'm repeating myself on saying that because we've learned that. We've had to the hard way. It's been traumatic and dramatic and devastating. There's been a lot of tears this season of frustration. But we finally got to a point where whatever happened, getting ready to do what's next has become empowering. And they create momentum, there's confidence, they have each other's backs, they're having fun when they're playing. And like I say, we're just playing our best ball right now because there's been a belief that our best is yet to come. We've talked about it, the storms are brewing, it's here. I love that we're playing great softball.